speaking of what you wanted to set out to accomplish, you've been working on a feature film right now that is completely timely as well with what's going on. So it's right in line with what your goals have been. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I just uh, wrapped uh, principal photography on a movie called The Last Revolutionary, which I also executive produced. Uh, it's written by Levy Lee Simon, who is a multiple award winning playwright and directed by Michael Brewer, who is an Emmy award winning uh, cinematographer. And The Last Revolutionary is, if you can imagine if you time traveled a black liberation revolutionary from 1972 and dropped him into 2016. Mm -hmm. And he was looking out the window trying to see how life had changed or not. Mm -hmm. And from his perspective, things really haven't changed, so why are we not doing more to change them? And my character is also a former revolutionary who has now become a traditional conservative suburbanite. And uh, my character tries to defend the status quo of what's going on now and to tell his character that action or taking action out in the streets is something that we just don't do anymore. And so it's a, um, it is a real conflict discussion about what's going on in the streets now and what we should be doing about it. Mm -hmm. I think that most people that are, that are my age who lived through the 70s, mm -hmm. we're looking at what's going on in the streets right now and we know it's wrong we are conflicted as to what to do about it. And so being able to come up with solutions that allow us to address in a real way um, changing the status quo um, is a challenge that we're all facing. But we can't back down from this challenge. So we have seen on YouTube and now on Facebook, the murder of apparently innocent American citizens. Most of them that we see are black. They're not all black. This is something, it is a, a uh, behavior that the police have somehow taken on that you can pull somebody over for a broken tail light and somehow, by the end of that interaction, that person ends up dead. Mm -hmm. Now, we've all become aware of the United States Constitution um, over the last few years, because we have a whole segment of our society that's always talking about the Constitution and how the president is violating the Constitution. Article 6 of the Constitution says that uh, if a person is accused, they are guaranteed the right to a speedy and public trial. The beginning of the accusation is your interaction with the police. Once the police have accused you, they are to arrest you. Once you are arrested, you are guaranteed a speedy and public trial. So if the policeman is accusing you um, and they have not arrested you, they are not allowed to kill you. If they have not accused you of a crime, then they're definitely not allowed to kill you. So Article 6 of the Constitution of the United States guarantees the right that you won't be killed before your speedy and public trial. That is inherent in the uh, Constitution itself. And we have not yet dealt with this, that every one of these people who has been shot on video uh, that was unarmed and was not accused of a crime, um, their constitutional rights were violated on video. But we don't have the mechanism right now to be able to deal with that. What happens is the video then goes to the state's attorney, who often works closely with the police. The state's attorney decides whether or not to take it to a grand jury, which often he does not, and that's where the investigation dies. Or he takes it to the grand jury, but he only gives them the evidence that he wants to give them and then tells them how they can judge the situation 
so that they have a very narrow window of how they can view this evidence, which always brings back the police as being innocent of this thing that we saw them do on video. So the mechanism through which we try to reach justice is a flawed mechanism, and that's the thing that we have to change. And until we start having that discussion, what we will have is upheaval because people will feel unheard. Mm -hmm. And it's a very dangerous thing to have millions of people feel unheard in a country where there are more guns than there are people. And we're starting to see that now uh, play out in the streets. So we are hoping that this film that we just did can add to that discussion and can open that discussion up in a way that we can start to put together positive solutions that can stop innocent, unarmed American citizens from being killed before they have received their constitutional right to a speedy and public trial. Well, it seems like your whole career, what you have done, is move towards staying with what's timely and what would help further society. So it's only appropriate, it seems like, that this is a movie that you're working on now and that you're so intimately tied to because it is so timely. So I look forward to hearing more about it and seeing it when it comes out. And thank you so much for joining us today for After Buzz TV Spotlight On. Now, where can everyone find you to keep up with your movie and all of your projects? And of course, you've got voice on Call of Duty video game. I mean, you are everywhere. Where can everyone find you? Um. You can come to the Last Revolutionary Movie um, on Twitter and on Instagram. You can also contact me at John Marshall Jones fan page on Facebook and uh, at Biggie Fries or hash, hashtag Biggie Fries, B-I-G-G-F-R-Y-Z uh, on Twitter and at Biggie Fries on Instagram.